Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender Zen app. And this week we have a couple of reads, a couple of news and conversations that you guys may want to actually take a look at. First up, Blender 2.83.16 is right here. So just in case you're working with the LTS version, you can now go over to the Windows Store steam or snap to download this this comes with a couple of bug fixes and most of these are specific to those working with amd cards chrome os and also mac os mojave now with this said there is a couple of news that you guys may want to take a look at and the first one is blender 3.0 planned release date is now postponed. There is an update to this as Ton has gone through to write a letter to the community suggesting that 3.0 should be released sometime in late October. And of course, there's a couple of reasons. One of them is for the core contributors to meet up in a real life workshop and discuss on things that they have done before. Wrap up on 2.8 UI works, review how it went, fix some things that went bad, and also see how they can improve 3.0. And at the same time, he's looking at ways that model team heads can also schedule their work to align with the release of 3.0. So he's looking at a much more clear guidelines sort of way for the development of 3.0. And he's also suggesting that new and ambiguous big projects should not be added at any time soon. Aside the projects that are already planned out, he's suggesting that new projects shouldn't be you know, brought into the picture at this point so that they could tackle the project that they already have on hand. He's suggesting the time for them to meet up in real life is sometime in July or August owing to the fact that the pandemic is gradually coming to an end and a planned workshop should be coming up in September. So for those who would like to take a look at this, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can check it out. Meanwhile, we found out that there is now a blue hyperlink for virtual reality. So it kind of looks like 3.0 might be coming with a virtual reality, you know, update. Of course, right now there is nothing here, but let's just keep our fingers crossed and believe that something cool will be coming. And while we talk about things that will be coming, let's also review the timeline because right now Blender 3.0 was supposed to be released within the third quarter, but with this update that we've just gotten, it looks more like Blender 3.0 will be released within the fourth quarter, which might cause a ripple effect in the timeline as 3.1 might come sometime early in 2022, but 3.0 update that Tony is suggesting is for the betterment of Blender as a tool in general. Now with that said, there's also a very nice news right here and a pretty cool read that I would suggest everyone to take a look at. And last time which we talked about this folks, the folks at Ubisoft Animation Studio, we talked about the idea of using Blender as an in-studio tool to start creating beautiful animations. And yes, there's a Blender and Rapid blog or news that you might want to look at. And this talks about their experiences, the roadblocks they met, and a couple of things that they've suggested to the community. So first off, they're looking at creating a 70 minutes episode movie okay and it's known as the rapid invasion mission to mass and for those who like to read more about the production i'm going to put a link in the description i'll bring you right here where you can read about how the switch how they dealt with the pandemic how they dealt with moving from one app to another you know based off different uh, digital content creation apps that they've been working on and the flexibilities between these two. Now within workflow and tools, they had a couple of things that were challenges. They wrote a couple of add-ons and one of them is the stamp info, which actually gives a couple of details on a rendered image so that they will be able to keep track. They also created another add-on which deals with shot manager and that shot manager does have a couple of features that you might want to check out. And they also created a new add-on known as video track since they use the video sequence editor extensively within the second phase of the production. Production. So some of the limitations that they had was not being able to separate an audio track from a video track. That was one. They also had an issue where files that were rendered or outputs from the video sequence editor could not be used as textures in another scene. Now the asset bank is also something else that they created, which has to do with more of an asset browser where they could pull things on the fly. And they also said that the asset bank, which they created earlier, might probably be oscillated very soon with the asset manager that is about to come natively into Blender. So we already looked at the fact that they created the mixer add-on. You know, we talked about it, we did the whole video about it, and also shared a couple of lights. So just in case you wanna see how this one works, I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can check that as well. And for those who would like to read more about what they were suggesting to the folks at Blender Foundation, 
and uh, you know how they would want other studios to also incorporate blender in there is a small read right here now this deals with those tiny technicalities that we've always talked about within the conversation that they're having right here they're saying it would be really really nice if blender foundation or maybe if there are sets of tutorials in regards to links and collections as this is one of those areas where huge studios actually rely on while creating their project so this is a proposal that they are actually pushing out so creators and also folks from blender cloud can take a peek at it and see if they can create something like this and probably that might entice other studios to start working with blender now with that said we have one nice update and um, this is more like an update from from the long side now the last time we talked about pablo dubaro was when we talked about the sculpt expand but today we have some news as pablo dubaro one of the developers has a beautiful beautiful blog that deals with asset creation pipeline design so the idea for this is contrary to asset browser project he's looking at where final products are actually referred to as assets you should be able to work with them in ev and in this case he's looking at performance rather than sizes of data that you can have within your viewport at a given time. Now, what he is looking at right now is ways that Blender would have a much more stable and better performance compared to handling so many data. Now, for this one to be possible, there is also a proposal where there could be a separate window. So in case you're thinking about working with meshes and having high resolution meshes, he's looking at how they can create a brand new window altogether that would handle high polys. So these high polys will probably be isolated from the rest of the scene, which would make the tools and also the viewports and all that features to work in real time. Now, with that said, there's a section that a lot of people are having a conversation about, and that is the modes. So in order to feed all planned features of the new design, some bigger changes have to be made to Blender in order to properly organize the new workflow. Now, these are some of the modes that are sort of being suggested. And uh, for all object types, there are certain things that has to do with describing their functional purposes in a pipeline. And these are as follows. There's an object mode. There is a freeform card, paint, layout, and topology mode, attribute edit, and also edit. And uh, these are things to actually make Blender better. So if you go through this article, there is a couple of things that have been summarized. Actually, I think one good summary exists right here. So I guess the lie was the person that actually summarize this thing in a much more shorter and easier way to understand so there's going to be a better synergy between the tools and uh, that is why they're trying to reorganize this thing and change how the workflow would look like there's also a fully interactive editable and rendering workflow which is what we saw earlier where you can easily sculpt in ev and also take advantage of all of those viewport performances the procedural and parametric painting with advanced sculpting is also one of the things that they are looking at bringing now despite this the extra thing which was also said right here is the inclusion of a brand new window or a brand new viewport that would handle highly detailed models so to me i think this is a this is a good step in the right direction as the folks at blender foundation are actually looking at performance they're looking at how the workflow would be better rather than just heap tons and tons of new updates new features and actually not see them through to the end so beautiful things right here. For those who like to read this one as well, I'm going to put a link in the description that I can bring you right here where you would be able to check it out. Now, with that said, there is also a couple of updates done right here for Blender. So the sequencer is having a performance update and this performance has to do with image cropping transform. There's also an update to the geometry node. Now you can select a given face or surface by material. There's also a new support curve instance in the bounding box node. And for those who like to work or for those who are currently working with the asset browser, there is now a brand new add option to link assets on drag and drop so you might also want to come through and take a look at this one so I'll probably put a link to this so that you guys might be able to see it meanwhile we have something that most of you guys need to check out so there's a conversation about add-ons policy so I'm just gonna leave this one in the description so you guys might check it out so the add-ons policies that is going on here you know it deals with Will Blender 3.0 be shipping with some of the add-ons? Will they be hosted on the cloud? What are the options that is available? How do you update these add-ons? And all that stuff. What are the issues that might be arising while working with add-ons from different third parties? 
and you can come through and read up on all of these things. And while we talk about add-ons, let's take a look at the community and see some of the add-ons that are available for this week. So for those who like to do things like curves, maybe you like to have some curve array, maybe you want to have some magical curve array, and you want these things to be automatically generated from edge curves that you've selected, you can now use this beautiful tool to do it. Link to this is also going to be in the description where you can check it out. And I'm actually considering reviewing this tool, you know, just in case you guys may want to see how it works before you purchase it. I'm considering reviewing this one and this looks really, really, really nice. Now, something else that looks really nice is the folks at Blender Now have created a new cap pack which is known as the city cap pack now this one is uh, specifically for just city cars and maybe you just need cars that are only rigged now i would actually suggest that you proceed to get the full pack instead of getting this one of course depending on what you like to do my personal preference would be get the entire pack itself instead of you know limiting yourself to the city pack but for those who are into getting just city packs maybe you just need a city car or sets of city cars this is better off as you would not spend as much as you would be spending while trying to get uh, this one right here now with that said there's also a free add-on that you guys may want to check out so this free add-on is known as versus color and for those who are into assigning versus colors to parts of their model this is definitely fantastic and is really really lovely and i would really suggest that you proceed to check it there's also another beautiful add-on that you might want to get and it's called the do blast now this do blast is for those who like to get animation play blast directly from blender this is a free and a cool add-on and of course i'm definitely going to put a link in the description where you can easily download these ones and start working with them so this is more like it for those who would like to read up on all of these things that we've talked about today tons of stuff you want to check out why blender is going to be released late you probably want to check on the project that the folks at ubisoft are working on and maybe you want to read on some of the things some of the challenges that they have i'm definitely going to put this link in the description and for sure for those who like to read more about the asset creation pipeline design something pablo de barro is proposing these are right here so you can do well to check them out Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And I'll see you guys again with a tutorial update. Free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.